Hey guys, welcome back to this series. Um, in this video, I'll be showing you how to connect your uh, headless WordPress uh, backend to your React application. Um, so to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and create the uh, CLI application with React. If you go to facebook.github.io slash react slash doc slash installation dot HTML, and this will be in the description down below, you can just quickly create a React app. So what I'm gonna do is open up my terminal. And I'm already in the location where uh, my current WordPress backend is at the headless blog. And I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, this React. Now, if you don't already have uh, the Create React app, uh, you're gonna need to install that globally. And anytime you install it globally on a Mac, you need to have a sudo permission. So do sudo npm install dash g create react app. Now I already have this, so um, it shouldn't actually do much. I'm just gonna check and make sure it's all up to date for me. But for you, it should install um, this program. Okay, uh, so now we're gonna use the create react app and we're gonna put the name of our app and we're just gonna call it headless react. And this will just take a minute, so I'll see you when this is done. Okay, so now if we take a look in our folder where our new app has been created right here, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this, this is our WordPress site, we're actually gonna rename this, and we're gonna rename it to admin, and we're gonna put it within our app, that way it's all in one file and it's easy to manage. Um, and so now that we actually change the source of the WordPress um, file, we have to go into our, our server and change uh, the file location where it's being hosted at because right now it, it doesn't know where it's at. So I might ask you for your password and open preferences, document root. Um, and you're going to go into your app and click the admin folder, select, OK, start server. Okay, and then just refresh your admin backend, make sure it's all working fine. It is, we're good to go. Okay, um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start the application. So we're gonna CD headless react, and we're gonna do uh, npm start. And we should be up and running, there we go. And then it even gives you a, a link to check your phone um, or a, some other device that's not directly on your computer, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyways, we're gonna go ahead and open up our code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code once again. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go right into the app.js uh, folder. Um, so I'm just going to clear out all of this and, you know, put the projects, just some simple markup, make sure that div is closed, go ahead and save that. Okay. And if we open up our terminal, it says compiled with warning, logos never used. Okay, so we imported it, but we don't actually need that anymore. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to end it out of the terminal and um, close out of this and run that same command in my text editor terminal just so it's easier to see. Okay, and so while that's starting up, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with pulling our data. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a constructor which basically runs as the first thing when this app is created on this URL or this page. So constructor and we have to call super whenever we create our constructor. And we're gonna say this, so we're gonna set the state, uh, make sure that's an object and we're gonna set projects to be an empty array. Okay, so we save this and uh, we inspect 
Oh, I spelled constructor wrong. Okay. And it should recompile. And um, what you want to do is if you don't already have the React um, extension for Google Chrome, go ahead and download that from the Google, Google Chrome store. Um, and so if you look, we now have this projects in our state. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set a function that runs whenever the component mounts or whenever it gets started. Um, so we'll go ahead and put that right after our constructor. We'll say component did mount, and we're going to say we're going to set a variable. We'll say let projects URL equals to, and this is going to be the uh, JSON uh, data that we're going to be pulling from WordPress and it's going to be pulling we want to pull only our projects in this case so we're going to go wp-json slash wp slash v2 slash projects and we're just going to copy this link I, I entered it in here to make sure that the data was valid and that was the right link so we're just going to paste that right in there and now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, use a fetch function which is some uh, I believe it's ES6 which works wonderful so this is basically uh, saying we're gonna get all the data here and so that's how we're gonna do it so fetch and projects URL and so once you fetch it then which is a promise we're gonna response set that to response dot JSON and what this does is it parses um, the data that comes from here and it parses it into JSON data. Um, that way we can read it a lot easier. Um, well, it's the only way we're going to be able to read it here. So, and then after we do that, we're going to set the response arrow function. And we're going to say this dot set state. So we're going to set a new state. And we're going to say we're going to set the projects equal to the response, and that's all you got to do. So now, if we save that, and uh, it should recompile, and we look, we can see our projects are now in our state uh, in our app. So good. Now, what we have to do is basically render them onto the page. So to do that, we're going to go into our render method, which comes with the startup. Um, create react app and we're gonna say we're gonna create another variable we'll say let projects equal to this dot state dot projects and now we're gonna use a map function and so what this does is essentially is a, a for loop but using ES6 which actually is a lot faster um, and a lot more efficient and uh, it's a little bit more readable too in my humble opinion so we're gonna say dot map and uh, parenthesis, parenthesis, project index. And so this basically is for every item in projects, um, we're gonna call it project, and then the, the key or the place we are at in the array is just gonna be referred to as the index. Okay, so now we're gonna create an arrow function and we are going to return some uh, JSX or JavaScript HTML or XML. Um, so we're going to say div and we're going to set the key equal to the index. Uh, very important. Uh, it'll give you a warning if you don't put this key, but it, it basically is a way for React to know where you're at in the loop. Um, so inside of this div, we're going to put an image and we're going to set the image equal to, um, if we look over here, we want to set the, the image of each project and we want to go into the better featured image, media details, sizes, medium, source URL. Okay, so we're going to do project dot better featured image dot media details dot sizes dot medium dot source URL. Okay, and um, we're going to put the alt tag. Um, it's very important in React um, to put alt tags to all your images. It gives you a little warning if you don't. It's good for SEO and just overall good to have alt tags, especially for um, 
you know, people who might not be able to see, they, they actually rely on the alt tags and the images, so that helps a lot. Uh, so in the alt tag, we're going to say project.better featured image dot alt text. Now, if you look on the right, we actually don't have any alt text, but if we go into our uh, projects, and I actually created another uh, project in here just to test things out. But if we go into our first one that we created and we click on the featured image, we can give it an alt text. So we'll just say uh, web dev pro fetch logo and set featured image, update that. Um, and so let's see, alt text. And now we're just going to close the image tag. And uh, we'll go ahead and just close this div, save it, and see if it works. OK. So it did work. I can tell you that right now. It did create the projects variable, but we're not actually rendering it on the page. So what we're going to do is right after projects down here, we're going to say projects, just like that. And there we go, we have uh, the two featured images of our two projects in here. I set them both to the same one. Um, and now if you right inspect this element, you'll see the alt is Web Dev Profesh logo. Okay, uh, so that's the basics of how to do it. Let's go ahead and uh, just put in some more of the uh, data that we created in the WordPress. So I'm just gonna paste these lines here and this just basically gets the title. We go into the project. Uh, let me show you where that's at. Um, so for the title, we're going to project.title. So project.title.rendered. And, and then for the stack, we go into project.acf, which is advanced custom fields. And then we go into stack. So um, for this new one, the test, there isn't a stack there. Um, and then we do the date created, we render that as well. So we'll go ahead and save that and it'll recompile and we should see all of that information. There we go. So that is how you can take your data from your WordPress headless WordPress API and use it in your React application. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments um, down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.